Azrod called and said, hey, do you want to do a Phantom Gaming build? And I said, yes, we do. So this is loaded with Azrock Phantom Gaming stuff, and it's also um, like the best FreeSync PC that I've ever played with in my entire life because it's got a 9900K and also the 580X, the RX 580X from ASRock. Uh, and then you couple that with one of our BenQ FreeSync monitors and it's just like, ah, oh, feels so good. The motherboard in this is the Phantom Gaming 9, Z390 of course. And on top of that, we've got the i9, the eight core 9900K, and that goes up to five gigahertz. That'll turbo up to five gigahertz. Um, and that's gonna be really, really handy when it comes to gameplay. Eight cores is gonna be really handy when it comes to productivity. So it's sort of like the best in both of those areas, but it's also, you know, got a premium price tag. So that's one thing that if you're just building a pure gaming system, you're like, eh. but if you're like, I gotta have the best, it is the best when it comes to gaming overall. All right, let's talk about some of the key features on the motherboard. First off, um, you guys can see the aesthetic. It's clean and minimal while still having that slight gamer, I guess, edge. And we've got several different zones here for RGB. All right, so this is the uh, ASRock Polychrome software. And we have multiple different RGB headers. We got a couple of them on there. They have their own software to control the RGB, or you can just make it all work together here with Polychrome. It all works just fine. So, and then you have all these different zones here. You know, your PCH heatsink, IO cover, and your audio. And let's make that red. Oh, then we just made it red. And then you can come over and control your opponent components right here, whatever you have hooked up. It'll synchronize with compatible headsets, keyboards, mice, all kinds of things. And there's lots of different things compatible out there with that. So it's easy to have this one application that'll control all your RGB. Keep your style in line, man. Also, you've got a 2.5 gigabit LAN port on the back, plus two additional LAN ports. Now this is gonna be handy, especially for people who are doing productivity. Um, I mean, the weakest link in a lot of this stuff is not gonna be your motherboard. It's gonna be your router or something else. Now above and beyond that, there's Wi-Fi on here and they didn't skimp out on the Wi-Fi. They kind of went crazy with that as well. It's top of the line AC Wi-Fi. Now you guys over Wi-Fi can get 1733 megabits per second and that is with the Wave 2 uh, router. Even with the standard AC router, you can expect up to 867 megabits per second, so they say. It'll be different depending on your use case, where your router is and all that sort of thing, but that's the ma maximum theoretical and that is plenty for uh, wireless. Um, they've got premium components in here, but you have a reinforced PCI Express slots, three of those, and that's for the nice heavy cards. Got a couple spots for uh, M.2 in here. One really big spot down there in the bottom with a huge uh, heat shield on it. I popped one up here on the top. I might put another one down there after the video. Pre-installed a, uh, you know, a heat sink on top of there. So it's right there in the top slot, nice and pretty. Now, as far as the power going to your CPU, well, we've got an extra power plug up here in the top, an extra four pin plus the eight pin up there. So you got a lot of power going to your CPU for overclocking and that sort of thing. And you got really nice capacitors all over this thing. You got the dual stack uh, MOSFETs. So you got really clean power going to your CPU. You know, I haven't really pushed this thing that much, but I have been doing a lot of testing, a lot of benchmarking, and I've had this thing on for a couple of days. I've been messing with it. I've been doing things you shouldn't do with this computer, and it hasn't even sneezed, let alone crashed. For the uh, CPU, of course, we've got the 9900K, and then cooling that, we've got the Cooler Master, Master Liquid ML240R, 240 um, millimeter radiator up there on top. Got it positioned nicely. And this is the Phantom Gaming uh, version. I recently installed the Cooler Master version and it's got the LED outline around the Cooler Master words. I much prefer the Phantom Gaming logo and that's a personal preference. I, this is all subjective. If you're like, whatever, then fine. You know, it's, it's a nice clean design that still has a little bit of gamer edge, but it's not like over the top silly, like some gamer things are. It's not too loud either. I can't really, I mean, you guys are hearing it right now and I'm capturing open broadcaster. So you guys are hearing the ambient sounds of the of the system with the mic. I left the side panel off so you guys could hear. For the uh, graphics card, we have the Phantom Gaming from ASRock. We've got the RX 580. This is an eight gigabyte card and it's overclocked. So this card is sort of a beast when it comes to 1440p and 1080p gaming, but I do not consider this a 4K gaming card. Um, but if you're running 1440p and you've got a you know a nice FreeSync monitor, that's the main thing. FreeSync is really freaking awesome, but just don't try to max out 4K games. And 1440p games, most games that I've played were able to max out other than like Metro. We'll get to some gaming benchmarks in just a second. All right, for the case, we've got the Mastercase H500. This is the Phantom Gaming Edition. Um, and subjectively, the style on this, I like the gray quite a bit. I'm not sure if I like the Phantom Gaming paint job personally, but if you're someone who's like, that's really awesome, 
sure, go ahead. Uh, but it really ties the whole phantom gaming thing together. As far as building in this case goes, only complaint I have is that the standoffs did not come uh, pre-installed, which is, that's not a big deal. Different motherboards need different standoff. This one only had one pre-installed and the rest of them were incredibly difficult to install. Had to use a wrench for those, which is kind of like, what am I doing with my life right now? Other than that, the case was amazing to build in and they have lots of different shrouds. Down here on the bottom, nice big shroud uh, that will, you know, block out all the cables. Over here, I guess you could put a radiator or something like that, who knows? Uh, all kinds of different things you could do there. And on the back, in the main area where your cables can be routed, there's a really large removable shroud. So after you get everything built, even on the back side, you can tidy that up. If you wanted to get like temper glass on both sides, uh, this one just has the, the steel panel on the, on the back side, but you could do that. Um, but otherwise, building this was extremely easy and I loved all the cable routing options that we had. Everything fits in here just fine. And my favorite part, we have two huge 200 millimeter fans in the front that keep things nice and cool, have a nice breeze coming in to the system, venting out the back. And the other thing that's nice about those two fans, the big fans like that, they are nice and quiet. They don't have to go as high as far as the RPM goes to keep things cool. So minimal noise. We got the V750 down here in the bottom. You guys can't see it, but it is gold rated 80 plus, meaning that everything's gonna be nice and happy. Also, the power that we're gonna be pulling from this, we're not gonna pull the 750 uh, all the time. I mean, we're probably never gonna pull a full 750 with this GPU, even with the, the beefy CPU like that. So we're gonna be running in sort of a sweet spot where we get really uh, good efficiency, sometimes up to 90, maybe a little over 90%. So that's what I'm looking for. And also high quality components like that. Now, um, they sent us, of course, the Team Force SSD right here on the bottom. And um, their style for the Phantom Gaming, I like quite a bit. So you see the, the regular style here. This is just a standard SATA 560 megabytes per second, which is pretty good for SATA. Um, and the style on theirs, you've got RGB all over this thing to give it that gamer style. Uh, the word Delta on their, their version is white, stands out a little bit. On the Phantom Gaming version, it's a little more subdued. And I actually like the style on this one a little better. The word Delta doesn't pop out as much, but it's still there. Um, and, it, and it adds a nice glow. I've got it under here, under the graphics card. It adds a nice little glow there. And we've got it plugged into the motherboard so we can adjust the RGB just using the software. Now, I wanted to put an M.2 in there. I'm using the Phantom Gaming uh, Delta SSD for all my games and all that sort of thing. I always recommend grabbing one. Now, these are really inexpensive. I got the Samsung. This is the P961, PM961. Now, it's not that fancy, but I threw a, you know, a heat shield on there for $5 or whatever, a little thermal pad and smacked it on there. So I had that just lying on the shelf and I was like, grabbed it, threw it in there. And I'm using that for my Windows drive because read speeds of up to 2800. And the price right now is 58 bucks. So threw one of those in there. So we've got the Excalibur RAM in there. This is the Phantom Gaming version. You guys can come over here um, and there's actually a team group page I'll link so you guys can see when these things come in stock on Amazon. It's 3200 uh, megahertz, cast latency 16. So that's gonna be plenty fast for productivity and also gaming. Uh, I like that nice low uh, cast latency of 16. But as far as the style goes, I wanna talk about that for just a second because there's not a lot of ridiculous edges and stuff. It's kind of a sleek, you know, not a lot of embellishments. Nice little glowing RGB area over there where it's kind of dark and lonely in that section. Now we've got 32 gigabytes of this in there and that's gonna really help when it comes to productivity, working on Unreal Engine, um, getting into Premiere, lots of layers, lots of stuff going on, not having to worry about running out of memory and stuff like that. For gaming, you don't need 32 gigabytes, but this is an i9 system. So we wanted to go all out. We've got the 32 gigabytes in there. Now you guys can also come over to Team Group and just check out where to buy and see if you can find some of these Phantom Gaming uh, products. Now the only thing that I would add to this, um, and this, like I said, you'll see a couple of builds similar to this uh, coming up on the internet from other YouTube channels and stuff. But if we had time to mod or if we had someone who wanted to come in and mod some things, I'd like to put a radiator right behind the two 200 millimeter fans. I think that'd look pretty snazzy. One other thing that I didn't love about this setup is that we have a USB 3.1 header on the motherboard and we don't have USB 3.1 up there. We got the header there. It always makes me feel funny when there's just a, a poor lonely 3.1 header, but I've been seeing that a lot lately with cases. So case manufacturers, all of them, we, all, we want 3.1, we want type C on the front of our case, all of the cases, please. All right, benchmarks. First off, let's talk about PC mark. Uh, guys, I'll be honest, I don't benchmark a lot and I don't really enjoy it. 
So this is our PC mark score. This is just the free version, but you guys can take a look at this. Scroll down and let you guys see. We played a few games on this and I'll, I'll do some more in the future depending on what you guys request. Really wanted to check out some of the Vulcan benchmarks. So I ran GFX Bench with Vulcan and you guys can see even at uh, you know 1440p, we're getting really good scores here. All right, so we got Metro Last Light Redo. This game just punishes everything. I maxed out the game in most areas, but I left the tessellation on normal because I personally don't see that much of a difference on the highest setting. I mean, really looking at the game, you, you can't really tell but Nvidia benefits a ton when you turn this up. So I don't think it's a, I think it's more of a ridiculous thing to turn that up. I also left PhysX off, of course, because this is an AMD card and it just completely cripples it. So otherwise everything else is maxed out at 1080p, including the filters SSAA is turned on. And you see there we got 51.53 FPS, completely playable. Uh, minimum was 31.61 during one of the firefights. That's still completely playable and it never dropped below 30. And the other thing that's nice is with FreeSync on, it just feels smooth the entire time you play. Now, cranking it up to 1440, this is where uh, you're going to want to turn this game down to medium. It still looks pretty damn good on medium, but um, in a really ridiculous beefy game like this, uh, this GPU can't quite keep it above uh, 30. As you can see there, its average was 28.56. Doesn't feel terrible with FreeSync on. Feels better than some console games. But still, I would rather play this at 1080 or actually 1440 with some of the filters turned down a little bit. That would be the way I'd play it. Okay, next up, get that Lith engine. What I think they call it the fire something engine now, but it's basically the old Lith tech that's been updated a gazillion times. And Shadow of War is a really nice looking game and it plays just fine on this. It's kind of funny, exactly 60 FPS average. The I double checked and made sure there was no frame cap or anything like that. So there you guys can see that on the screen. And then when we turn it up to, to 1440p, still playable. Uh, a couple spots where it dropped down to 24, but just go in and turn down some of your filters. I would probably myself play this on the system at 1440p with the filters turned down to medium or something like that. I think it looks better than 1080p with the filters all the way up or turned up you know, quite a bit. So that's how I would play it. So those are the benchmarks that I've currently done on this. And I might put a 2080 Ti in here and see how fast that is but I, I want to know from you guys because benchmarking is like I said not my favorite thing to do and takes a lot of time so what would you guys like to see while I have these parts I got to send the i9 9900k back to Intel in about a week and after you guys see this video there'll be like five or six days so let me know in the comments I'll read them and then see what we can get to overall I like what ASRock is doing here I like the fact that they're getting together with these other companies and creating sort of a line that has a similar aesthetic and, and really goes together. The words on the side of the case here, uh, I'll say ASRock, just you can probably lose those for the American market. They're fast, mysterious, and unbeatable. It's a little bit over the top, and I think a lot of companies sort of are on that line where they're like, is this over the top or not? Well, these parts are mostly not over the top, but I think the words on the side there. For me personally, a little bit over the top, but let us know what you guys think in the comments. Uh, but overall, you can't go wrong with a lot of the, the parts in here. And I do wish that T-Force would, um, would, I guess, become more well-known in the USA. They're not hugely well-known, uh, but I've used them in several different systems and I've, I've liked the performance that I've gotten with them. Had no complaints other than the, the case aesthetics. This is a really, uh, you know, solid system. I have to see what I can do when I put some different GPUs in there and stuff. But stay tuned for that. Let me know what you guys think in the comments. And let me know if, if you guys are going to be grabbing up any of this phantom gaming stuff. See you guys in the comments. Behind the two, uh, two, two, the two, 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 two,